All right, I tried not to make a video on this. It was a quite a lengthy conversation that a lot of people got in on and came after me for, much like this conversation, which I keep telling them, and I kept telling them over and over again, that uh, they are trying to shame me socially, and they're trying to shame me uh, into submission. It is a control tactic that normally females use, especially on this platform. A lot of people use it, but normally um, females go with shaming. Uh, to go in there. I cited different studies, cited different philosophies, even cited the study that, you know, uh, as for slut shaming d d uh, goes in comparison to this, uh, it was women, not men, that were doing majority of the slut shaming online. There was already been m multiple studies on that and multiple studies on uh, how different tactics are for women uh, to control things in a relationship and versus men. Like, you know, women will be nice to each other with the face, talk behind their back. Men will be, you know, very insultive normally to their buddies, to their face, try to one-up each other with an insult. And when he leaves, like, man, that's the nicest guy you ever meet. He's really reliable and so forth. Um, same thing, like, uh, the whole thing started with a, a silent treatment and kicking a kicking, uh, spouse out of the bedroom. And I just come in and, like... It's odd that a guy does it to me because normally it uh, is more of a female thing. Uh, I know when I was married and I know when I was in relationships, I living together, I end up sleeping on the couch. I got kicked out of the bedroom. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore because I will not do that. That's I take the Bill Burr stance on that. All of them came out of the woodwork. One called me an incel, or I think multiple called me an incel, again saying that can't get so forth. I talked about different things that were withheld, one was being intimacy or sex, and they said they said that women don't do that, they can't do that, blah, blah, blah. No, it has been done. Uh, either sex that does it is, is still wrong to withhold. You should have a conversation. You should be both uh, on par and together on it. Um, but uh, a lot of times that part of the intimacy, even a conversation, silent treatment, is holding withholding intimacy to your partner. And that is not good. Uh, that is, there's certain conversations you have with your spouse you're not going to have with your friends. And there's certain conversations you have with your friends you're not going to have with everyday people. But you can see how this person here is, uh, you know, like you, people like me, you think that you like, get the hint and the one's on your side. And then I told her, I don't care who's on my side. I was after truth. I was after a synopsis. We can, and I said many times. Uh, we can agree to disagree. The the, the original poster said uh, we disagree, and she wasn't going to comment on it, but she kept coming back in and trying to duke it out. So they wouldn't they wouldn't foresee that. It's, it's, it was it's uh, there was a lot of man male bashing to go out there. They called me a misogynist, of course. They said all men did you know this thing or that thing, and I said, well, that's misandry. They're like, no, you're the misogynist. I said, no, it's a female tactic that normally is done by females, can be done by males, but normally it is a female tactic to withhold conversation, to withhold certain relationship aspects. Men, on general, will get upset. Uh, they will yell, be more physical. Women are more social. And it is pretty much the way it goes. There's been lots of studies on it. I brought in philosophy, but I brought in history. I brought in a whole bunch of stuff. They said I'm, they're ignoring all my, my points and all my references. I even linked them into stuff. They said they're no longer going to pay attention. They're going to ignore my points. And then they're just going to sling insults. They're like, uh, this is supposed to hurt my feelings. I don't know who this person is, nor do I care to know them. So their opinion of me has no bearing or weight. I have no investment with them. And they think that a, telling a complete stranger because they value a stranger's point of view more than probably someone next close to them, that's going to affect them. So that should affect everybody, but it doesn't affect me. I waited a long time. It was a long conversation. It was a relatively decent conversation on it. But yeah, and, and this was, this kind of behavior was on par. Like I said, I got called an incel. I got called a misogynist. I got called a horrible person. I got called a bunch of names, a bunch of insinuations, all to shame me to change my mind. Not any facts or figures to change my mind. 
uh, not any form of a logical conversation. It was all emotional base. I had one guy tell me that I was an idiot and couldn't, couldn't, couldn't clean. And I was trying to tell him like the differences with some of the relationships that I have been in that my way wasn't the way. So there was the way and all the way was her way. Male or female, that does not work. Um, you should be appreciative that your spouse is trying to help out. All right. You can have a conversation how you like things and you can have a conversation how he likes things and you can still do the same things and still do them different and still get the job done. It's not that it has to be done a specific certain way. The dishwasher does not have to be loaded a specific certain way. And I never loaded the dishwasher anyway. I always washed dishes by hands, even to this day. But regardless, um, I've had a lot, and I've seen a lot, and I observe, of uh, women want it done their way and their way only. He doesn't fold the towels right. He doesn't put the towels away right. I grew up in a household like that. That's fine. I mean, I didn't fold the towels right for my father, and he wanted something done. He really, um, throughout all the linens in the closet, had me refold them. And if I did not fold them correctly, he came back in and, and, and put them on the ground and had me fold them again till I could get them correctly to his side. Uh, it was practice, practice, practice. That was that was his technique of repetition, physical repetition of what was done. But he also demonstrated it too. What was done, what needed to be done, and have that repetition until you got it. You know, kind of the teacher model. If you don't do it right the first time, you gotta do it again. Don't do it right the second time, you gotta do it again. Um, rote memorization is basically what it's called. So yeah, yeah, I I got my thing was like I got accused of using uh, vocabulary uh, by you know like the dictionary by my side I, I don't do that I, I do use um, extensive words I guess um, but I, I am not the best at it and I'm apparently not the worst at it uh, because that is also a common complaint that I normally get but yeah just if you have this where people like not much you can you can do with people like you. They're just trying to insult you and shame you. And if you take it to heart, don't take it to heart. You think that if you get the hint, uh, when no one is on your side, okay? That means their allegiance is that it's it's wherever the wind blows. They're not they're, they're not going to be a very allegiant friend if they're your friend. If, they, if they're saying stuff like this, they're not going to be a very allegiant friend. It's whatever popular opinion is. And popular opinion has been wrong more time than it's been right. So if you have morals, if you have ethics, those are things that are great to have. And you have to test those out every time. The book I read, Integrity, was great on this. I loved it. It was one of my favorite books, along with Sleeping with Extraterrestrials on my um, first exit out of college. Uh, we had to read that book, and that, that book was talking about constantly testing your ethics. If you have ethics... You need to test them out and see if that is truly ethical. Because one scenario might fit, but another one might not. To find if it is truly ethical. And to use reason and logic. And it was great. And this person doesn't want to use reason and logic. It's testing point on what is ethical, what is right, is, is public opinion. And, well, public opinion was also mobs of people that hang people because of whatever reason. Public public opinion was to again in mobs go out and pull a trucker out and then continue to kill him on, on the middle of the street with a brick. Mob mentality is what she is advocating for really. And that's just not we need smarter minds, we need cooler heads, and we need a logical process. But yeah, you can tell I'm long with it because it's been on 10 minutes. And I just thought I'd chat about that. But um, yeah, let me know how you think my haircut is because I look like a rejected old retired Backstreet Boy. But uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh.